We are talking to John Wilmoth, the director of the Population Division of TESA. You just launched the revision of the 2012 World Population Prospect. What surprised you and what is the main message in this report? Well, I think the main surprise for the world when we came out with this report was the, um, the increased estimates of the level of fertility in many developing countries, uh, in, in the, some of the least developed countries, many of them in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, this was based on uh, continuing evaluation of the available data. And uh, as more data came in over the last several years, we became more and more convinced that what we had expected in terms of a downward trend in fertility had not materialized. And so that has important implications for our projections of the future as well, because our future fertility trends, of course, start from the present. And so now they start from a higher level. And even though they're declining in our projections and we're anticipating that these countries will continue to adopt uh, practices of family planning and gradually reduce the size uh, of families and therefore slow population growth, we're, we've basically delayed that process in our projection so that therefore world population is projected to grow somewhat faster and to higher levels than what we were projecting in the past. In the developed countries, you have registry systems for birth and death where everything is recorded. In the developing countries instead, you don't have such registries. So how are you coping with that and how are you counting the people in those countries? That's a good question. Um, most countries take censuses, but given the lack of this registry data that you're talking about, we have to fill in the gap with something else. And so typically what we do is we collect survey information, sample surveys, where for a sample of typically women of reproductive age or a little bit older, we ask them about their history of childbearing. We ask them how many children were born. We ask them the dates when they were born, whether the children survived. So we get information not only on the level of fertility for the woman, but also the survival of her children. And these same types of surveys that are often used also to ask women about the survival of their sisters and if their sister died, was it while they were pregnant? And from that, we derive some information about maternal mortality. So we get a lot of different types of information from these surveys. However, it's really an inferior sort of, informa sort of information uh, in the sense that it, it, it has a lot of uh, degree of error. There's a large degree of error. Uh, so there's much uncertainty about the estimates that come out. We only know something kind of within a range. And secondly, um, we can trace trends over time using these survey data, but really only in a very general way, kind of what's the general trend over a period of 10 years. So what can the UN system do to face this challenge and how can we help today? It cannot be done simply by uh, international agencies or academics from developed countries going in and collecting the information like they do in surveys. It requires building a system, a long-term system that's integrated into the society. And uh, I, I, I can't really tell you why this hasn't happened better. I think it's, uh, it's a shame because not only do we lack then the information that we get that can be used for demo tracing demographic trends, but you know these, uh, these systems also provide a basis for identity. Uh, birth registration is the first document in a whole series of documents that gives a person, get, get, like gives personhood basically. And then a death certificate closes that. And uh, death certificates also provide all this rich epidemiologic information on causes of death to really understand what the major concerns are and to understand if certain areas of a country are uh, experiencing some flare-up of, of a particular type of disease or illness. So these are incredibly valuable systems and I, I think the, the world would do well to invest in them as we move forward. In your report, you are speaking about the increase of life expectancy. It looks like a good news, but it isn't free of challenges, is it? The evidence is a little bit unclear as far as what has happened in levels of disability at older ages and what does that imply in terms of how much time are we spending, how much of the additional years of life expectancy are good years versus bad years. And what's the balance between those two? We don't know for sure, but I think we know enough to say that uh, we're gaining a lot of good years uh, as well as maybe some bad years. When we gain life expectancy, a lot of the gains are good, good, healthy years. That's what's driving the increase of life expectancy. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Wilmer.